and all the way up to Channel Islands because I'm going to take you guys to the Channel Islands Maritime Museum. I've been invited by one of the head honchos there, Pat Hart. I met Pat at the Murphy Museum. She's going to show us around a bit. I don't think there's going to be any cars, but there's going to be some boats. There's going to be some ships. There's going to be some cool stuff. It's a blustery day here in the Pooh. Just about December and the weather's about 75 degrees. I kind of feel guilty saying that to all those places that are cold out there. But I am actually looking forward to some cold. We'll see what happens. Channel Islands. Um, I've never been here before. Then welcome to the Channel Islands Maritime. <laughs> this is spectacular, Pat. So tell me, you know, where we are and uh, some of the history about this place. We're located in the Channel Islands Harbor, um, which is out here with a scenic view to end all scenic views. We've been in it as a museum for 27 years uh, in February, and we've been at this location for about six years. And you, you were telling me earlier that this used to be a restaurant. This used to be a restaurant. This was um, the um, Port Royal, and we've converted it into one of the most exquisite art and ship model museums you'll ever see. You guys are going to blow your mind when I show you some of this. this is, these are cars for the sea. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. But exactly. you're going to see some spectacular art. We can shoot, shoot some of the art. That's okay? We can do that. Yes, okay. we can. All, All right. right. And, Good. and your job here? I'm the president of the board, but I'm also a volunteer um, and have been a volunteer for the last 14 years. Let me introduce you to a superb person named Ed Marple. Ed Marple, as a professional, made dentures back in the day. As you can imagine, everything had to be perfect. Ed started a, a hobby of making ship models, and he bought a kit, and it looked really fun, so we put it together. He bought a second kit, and he thought, you know, I can do better than that. And this, if you can believe it, is his third model that he made completely from scratch. Every single thing on these ship models was made from scratch, and you can see the complexity as you go along. Ed has passed away, and his wife wanted us to have the whole collection so that people could really see the skill set, which is also why we have his workbench over here. I don't know how many he totally did. Okay. Of our collection, we have five here. The one that he was working on when he passed away, the ship model over there for the Robert E. Lee, right. and then in the other museum um, entryway, we have one of his other ships. Okay. Yeah. So wow. his his the complexity is amazing. This is unbelievable. The ship, the Royal George, took him over five years to construct, <laughs> and the wooden piece in front that he carved. 500 hours worth of work. It's absolutely detail specific. And his wife got involved by going to the Admiralty in England, these are all British ships, and getting all of the blueprints and figuring out how people made them back in the day. And what we understand, although we'll never know because we can't get inside, is that the inside is as detailed as the outside. Imagine. The foundation that has this collection is the Harry Nelson Foundation. 
and Harry was very philanthropic. Harry found uh, Mr. Marple and the ship models, loved the quality of the work, and commissioned and bought many of his models. I don't know what you would charge to, or what someone would charge to, to build these things today. I can't even imagine, They're, and I can't even imagine what the value of them is uh, because it's priceless. Yeah. the detail. This was the personal yacht for Charles the first, okay? Charles wanted what he wanted when he wanted it. And so as he was, as it was being built, Charles came down and added things to the ship. He said, I don't have as many cannons as some of my enemies have. And so they said, sir, we have all the cannons we can do. And he said, I need more cannons. So if you'll notice up on the top, there are two cannons up there, two cannons here, two, and they're facing inward. Right. Not a good idea <laughs> to fire those little fellows, right? But also you'll notice that along the side, he had hand carved each of these wooden panels. And each of these wooden panels is unique. When he saw it, he said, now that's lovely, but not quite right yet. Let's gild it. Ugh. When the ship came out of dry dock and the people in England saw why they had been taxed, there was a rebellion and Charles lost his head over the whole thing. Hmm. So be careful what you ask for, yeah. you might get it. <laughs> you might lose your head. <laughs> little dots yeah each one of those is actually a tunnel wow. Look at that. I mean it's less than a toothpick inside. it's hard to see but these little dots are actually dowels that go they go all the way through or how far into the wooden rib now this ship that you guys are looking at this is probably about 18 inches maybe 24 inches from tip to tip. These are not that large, but the detail compared to this one, that's that's huge. Right. And they can see the size because we have about a five foot six little character standing back there to give you a, a feeling for the size of what the actual ship would have right. been. Right. Another group of ship models that we have, these are over 200 years old. They were made by prisoners of war when Napoleon was at war with England in the early 1800s. The French sailors would be captured. The British wouldn't let them go, so they imprisoned them. These guys got bored, and so what they did was found that they could take the bones out of their dinner dish, soak it in bleach water, warm bleach water, they became pliable. That's what is made these boats. These are bone models. <sighs> Most guests, when I ask, what do you think that material is? Think ivory, or because we're modern people, they think plastic. But these ship models were actually developed 200 years ago. think that they're engineeringly correct either because they were just making it up as they went along. So these are all eyeballed? Yes. They're not even measured? No. And there's no diagrams or anything that they had to work from. They just work from their own minds. In addition to the great ship models that you've just seen, the art that we have is incredible. Our art starts 400 years ago when the Dutch were the supreme power in the world. And this picture right here is one of the first maritime pictures in the entire world. The Dutch started the whole process and what they did was to use this really as a publicity campaign. This showed the might that they had and indicated to everybody, don't mess with us because we're number one. And 
you'll notice that even though this painting's 400 years old, every single one of the people has a face. Every single one of them is unique. You guys notice, but there's no Photoshop in this whatsoever. None. It's to decline, and the British power begins to rise. The British monarchs realize, whoa, these guys had a good thing going. So the British monarchs bring the Dutch painters over to England and teach them how to paint. And so as you move through the um, exhibit here, you will see that we go from Dutch power to British power, but the paintings look very similar because of the nature of the painting teaching that went on. model is, as you can see, quite large. Back in the day, the problem was that if you were in the business of selling warships, the people that you went to sell it to weren't engineers, they were politicians. And so what you did was you constructed a very large model that they could then look at and say, yes, I like the position of the cannons, no, I want you to do this. And so we think that what this is actually is an admiralty model. This is Admiral Jung Her. He was the commander of the fleet. He made seven voyages around the known world right here to them, okay? And he sails 50 years before Columbus in a different ocean. So they could never ever have met. But if the two ships, Columbus's ship and Jung Her ship had come side by side, that's the correct ratio. Oh. Can you even believe it? So Columbus this is like three um, leaky little boats, and that's like the Santa Maria, the Pindo, and the. That's Nina. Santa Maria yes. in scale, and this is. And this is his treasure ship. <laughs> We're talking the size of a modern aircraft carrier. This is the whole presentation about the beginning of the submarine warfare that began during the Civil War. And when you research these submarines and realize that they were human powered, it's absolutely amazing. That's scary. <laughs> yes, it would it be is. scary exactly. to go inside that thing. And who would want to? We know it as La Genelle, but it's, uh, personally I think it's a misnomer because it was only La Genelle for about six months of its, of its sh ship life, so to speak. Uh, originally bringing people from uh, Puerto Rico to New York. Coincidentally, my mother and father immigrated on that ship in 1932. Taken over by the military from World War II. Uh, it was a troop carrier involved in the D-Day landings. A mixture of crews and, and cargo. Then it became La Rosa Star. Then it was strictly passenger. And it was bringing a lot of immigrants from Germany to Canada. It did that for a number of years. Then it became the Bahamas Star. Strictly, that was its most successful period of time. As a result of this cruise area, it saved some lives in a, in a, a, a ship fire in the Caribbean. Now it became La Genelle. Came out here to California with the original intention of being a hotel or a restaurant. It was a pending sale when a storm came in 1970, April 13th, 1970, washed it up on shore, and it was a total wreck. They couldn't drag it off. Made a reef that's a very famous reef spot, actually diver spot, and filled up the hulk with the, with the rocks. It's still there. A plaque out in the sand that tells us he lies lodging now. This museum is off the hook. These models, I, you can't even appreciate, really, until you see them in person. The, the level of detail, the design, the engineering, this dude set up, <laughs> this is not something that, uh, that people can do nowadays. And if they did, they'd probably spend a lifetime doing it.
have noticed there's not a lot of people around, it's because it's, uh, it's open for us. Kind of check things out and give you guys a special tour.